Holy Sabbath, everyone, and welcome. Once again, as we come before you, we'd like to share with you quickly that we're going to need your prayers, and most of all, please get a Bible. I'm not going to be repeating anymore to take notes. Most of all, it's going to be my prayer and hope, and it's going to be discreet. So once again, welcome, and Holy Sabbath, and we pray that you receive the Holy Seal. For those who are present, let us have a word of prayer before I do begin. Our Father who art in heaven, as we kneel before you, we want to praise you and thank you that we may rest in you. In these troublous times, we ask for the outpouring of thy Holy Spirit, and thank you for the good news that I received today, and bless your holy name that your people are waking up and realizing that you're coming very soon. On this Holy Sabbath, we ask for the forgiveness of our sins, for our repentance, Ask for your grace and your mercy and pardon. Yeshua HaMashiach, forgive us of our ignorance for anything we've done. Whatever we've heard or seen, whatever we've said, whatever we've thought, whatever we feel, Yeshua, we ask for reconciliation, that we may enter into thy covenant. Bless us and sanctify us this evening. And regenerate our spirit with thy Holy Spirit, for the flesh is weak. But the Spirit is willing. May the meditation of my mind and my words be directed by you. I claim Isaiah chapter 30, verse 21. For thy sake and for thy glory we pray. Bless those who are present and will be viewing and viewing worldwide. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach we pray. Holy Sabbath, O mighty Prince. Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. <clears throat> Our topic, the historicist view, eschatology. Many of us had understood these words many, many years ago. But beginning today, ladies and gentlemen, we will be going to a study that is going to be a long one. And we will take it step by step. And I do encourage each one of you to go ahead and send in your questions. Go ahead and chat with us that we may in the middle of the study, we will go ahead and answer those questions. This message is not only for us, it is for you, so that you may be grounded and realize what is taking place. There are many people that want to overlook much information and want to reapply applications and prophecy, and yet they have no idea what's occurred. As we begin this study, ladies and gentlemen, we understand that our Savior is in the most holy of holies, interceding on our behalf. And we also understand that he came in human form, was crucified and rejected by the Hebrews, not Jews. Everyone wants to say Jew, 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 Jew when it's referring to the tribe of Judah. In these studies, ladies and gentlemen, I will give you accurate words so that you may view them, you may look them up in your Strong's Concordance, in your correct Strong's Concordance and look them up in the good Texas Receptus book. We also understand that there are many, which are millions, that use the Schofield Bible. Please do not use it. That book is so corrupt. Many use the NIV. That specific book was organized and put together. It is a Jesuit Bible. The Revised Standard Version, the American Standard Version, are all revised versions. This evening we will be using Bible. So we will test your brain, your frontal lobe, that you may be able to respond to these questions and respond to these messages and ask yourself if you're there. Are you carrying these credentials? Do you know this message? Are you prepared for Yeshua to seal you and to try you in the fire so that you may be found worthy, worthy to give this loud cry? This is not a trick. This is not a game. This is life. Like one would say, it is mi vida, it is my life. The historicist view, eschatology. In viewing, we will be using the King James Version, which is the Texas Receptus, this evening. Turn with me to 2 Chronicles chapter 36, verses 15 through 20. 
However, there are two dates in various Bibles, B.C. 610 and 586 B.C. Only one date is correct. Remember, only one date is correct. You have various Bibles that have been printed, which has confused the dates left and right. And that topic will be in this series, but not in this one. So we're going to begin with a foundation so that you may have your foundation and you may study this and ask yourself, are you there? Were you there? Are you able to handle this message? Are you strong enough, faithfully, are you ready with his armor on to give this message to win souls to the sanctuary in these last days? As we begin... <coughs> Turn with me to 2 Chronicles chapter 36, verse 15, and I will be reading in the correct verbiage. You will see it in the Western culture, in the English versions that have been changed, even in the King James Version. You read in your hearing. And the Yahweh Elohim of their father sent to them by his messengers, rising up beat times, and sending because... He had compassion, there's the key, compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. Verse 16. But they mocked the messengers of Elohim. Those messengers were his prophets and despised his words and misused his prophets, which were beaten up, put in dungeons, mistreated, until the wrath, in other words, until the anger of the Yahweh arose against his people, referring to the Hebrews, till there was no remedy. And the word remedy here, ladies and gentlemen, it refers to healing. There was no healing for these people. They were rejecting the messages. Remember that the word remedy refers to healing. In reading, till there was no healing. Verse 17. Therefore he brought upon them the king of the Chaldees, who slew their young man with the sword in the house of their sanctuary, and had no compassion upon young man or maiden, old man or him that stooped for age, he gave them all into his hand. Verse 18, And all the vessels of the house of Elohim, great and small, and the treasures of the house of the Yahweh, and the treasures of the king, and of his princess, all these he brought to Babylon. There's the key, Babylon. So we know that in the year B.C. 607, Daniel chapter 1 was dictated. Take note. B.C. Daniel chapter 1 was dictated in the year 607. Verse 19. And they burnt the house of Elohim and break down the wall of Jerusalem and burnt all the palaces thereof with fire and destroyed all the goodly vessels thereof. Referring to the furniture of his sanctuary, etc. Verse 20, focus. And them that had escaped from the sword carried he away to Babylon where they were servants to him and his sons until the reign of the kingdom of Persia. Babylon rose in the year 677 B.C. Babylon endured 140 years. Babylon fell to Medo-Persia. Verse 21, our key verse. Take note. To fulfill the word of the Yahweh by the mouth of Jeremiah the prophet. Focus until the land had enjoyed her Sabbath, for as long as she lay desolate, she kept Sabbath to fulfill threescore and ten years. Now, in verse 21, where you see Sabbaths in the plural, it's referring to Hebrew number 7676, the weekly Sabbath. Okay? For as long as she lay desolate, she kept Sabbath. To fulfill three score and ten years. Now, question. Do you know what three score and ten years is referring to, brothers and sisters? Do you know? The prophecy begins in Chronicles chapter 36. 
and stay focused now. Here's your blessing, and here's your key. In the year 677 BC, Babylon rose. This mighty kingdom rose. The three score and ten years, as I asked before, do you know the three score and ten years, what it means? Now, was it written in six or was it written in five? Eighty-six. Now, there are two years that are given there because they're in two different Bibles and because this scholar was correct and the other scholar was not correct. There is key here. The dates and the year vary and they're very, very important. In the Seventh-day Adventist Church, we have many speakers. Many. Millions of them. However, there are many theologians that might have overlooked the correct date. Now, what we're trying to do here is to express truth, present truth, in regards to this message. Some of you are already kind of waking up in regards to the direction that I'm going. But rest assured, it's going to mean something today. Stay with me. we got to build a foundation, okay? Now, in the year 677 B.C., means before Christ era, Babylon rose. It ruled 140 years. It fell to Medo-Persia. Now, the three score and ten years means, number one, 70 years are determined upon thy people, Daniel. The people are referring to the Hebrews. Okay? 70 years. Number two, three score and ten years is referring to the 2,300 day year prophecy. Number three, in Daniel chapter 8, verse 14, turn with me to Daniel chapter 8, verse 14. You may grab your Bibles there, yes. Turn with me to Daniel chapter 8, verse 14. You can take a note on that. I will wait. Daniel chapter 8, verse 14. Now remember, ladies and gentlemen, this message is for us. And there's some specific reasons why these messages are going to be coming out, which deals with last day events. Turn with me to the prophet Daniel, Daniel chapter 8, in reading in verse 14. <clears throat> and he said unto me, Unto 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Okay? This is referring to the investigative judgment of the end. The little horn that occurred in 1844, October 22nd. The Hebrews might say September 22nd. But we will stay focused here. I will be inserting a few words here and there to bring in a thought to your mind so that you may take note because you're going to need this information throughout these studies. This is the first one. Continuing. <clears throat> Israel lost self-governance. Israel lost it because of breaking the Ten Commandments and because of breaking other laws that they were given to them. Now, I'm referring to Israel, I'm referring to all 12 tribes, until captivity ended. In other words, the captivity ended because the Father released them from the captivity. So from the year of 723 B.C., the first 10 tribes of Manassas go into captivity. Why? Because they were not able to self-govern themselves. They were breaking the Torah, they were breaking the laws, they were breaking every iota they can imagine because they thought that they didn't need the Father. And out of all that he'd gone through with them, they were still neglecting to be obedient people. And this is why they continued to enter into captivity time and time again. Number one, recover the right to rule themselves. Israel needed to recover the right to rule themselves. Today, in the world today, the Christians and the Hebrews, or let's say Jews that everybody wants to call them, applies the same rule. We all need to recover the right to rule ourselves through His commandments, through His Torah, so that we may be found worthy to be a remnant to declare this message and prepare for the loud cry. Number two, Israel lost the right to build the wall and the temple. Now, Israel needed to recover the right to rule themselves. There are two key points. Israel needed the right to build the wall and the temple and in 408, the temple needed to be rebuilt. Remember this. In 
In 408, the temple needed to be rebuilt. Now, the begin there has to be a beginning date because we need a premise and we need scripture. So, at this moment, I would apply Ezra chapter 7. And Ezra chapter 7 is the foundation of this prophecy that was given. We also know that the year was 457 B.C. It took 49 years from 457 to 408 to rebuild the temple. It needed to be established first. They needed to govern themselves. It's the same thing that's happening in the United States. Protestantism, Republicanism has fallen. And in order for the Christians to come out of the United States, as well as in the world, the people need to reestablish themselves and learn to govern themselves with the Constitution. Now bear in mind that I will add, and I will share the names later, and many people know this speaker. He's a, he's a Messianic Jew. And he has been revealing in regards to the Spanish people who will play a role in the last days. Now, where did he get this information? Bear with me. Number, number two, he is also realizing that in his studies, in his research, it goes back almost 200 years, where they had wrote that the Spanish people would play an event in last day events, and that the Constitution would be repudi repudiated and that they would reestablish themselves in the Constitution in the United States where issues would take place. Now, that's as far as I want to go there, there on this part. Later, I will elaborate more and I will share with you his name, etc., and their church on the screen so that you will take note in regards to what is taking place with the Hebrews and the Jews now in these last days and what they are finally accepting and realizing. Now bear in mind, ladies and gentlemen, we have had Caucasian presidents, different nationalities. We have had an Afro-American uh, president who was a Muslim, President Obama. And now we have a uh, President Joe Biden, and now we have a vice president who is Asian and Afro-American. And amen. Our Savior sits them down, he raises them. However, the next president will be a Spanish person. That's coming from Pastor Richard Gonzalez. Why? It's because of what I have researched and studied and know. There is a president that will be coming who will be Spanish. There are many uh, Spanish men who are rising up in the United States who have come from other countries. Uh, they have migrated when they were children, etc. And they rose to the stature to be underneath President Donald Trump's administration. However, a lot of these people are rising up in different states, running to be governor, running in different political seats. However, their religion varies, and sometimes it doesn't. But in these last days, yet, ladies and gentlemen, religion does matter. So I want to share with you that what's going on today in the United States is the same thing that took place in 457 B.C. with Babylon coming in and taking over Israel, because Israel failed to keep the Torah. Okay, now, Israel once again lost self-governance until captivity ended. Okay, and Israel needed to recover the right to rule themselves. And Artaxerxes is the one that gave that decree. Okay, although there were two others, but Artaxerxes' decree is correct, and I will share that later. Number two, Israel needed the right to build the wall and the temple. They needed to build that temple because they didn't have nothing. They were empty, as same as today. All the churches are empty. And so that wall and that temple needs to be built again. That spiritual temple needs to be built up in every human being in the world, meaning the Ten Commandments of the health message. This is what needs to be built up. Continuing. In the year 677 B.C., Turn with me now to Daniel chapter 1. We will go now to Daniel chapter 1. And read in your hearing. I will be reading from Daniel chapter 1. And Daniel chapter 1 was dictated by the prophet in the year 607 B.C. Daniel's training in Babylon. 
In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. This is when it occurred. It wasn't 603 or 606 that many scholars have determined to put a finger on. Because if you begin with the wrong date, you're going to end with the wrong date in prophecy. And this is very, very sensitive, very crucial. In verse 2, Daniel chapter 1, verse 2, And the Yahweh gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand, and part of the vessels of the house of Elohim, which he carried into the land of Shinar, to the house of his God, and he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his god, pagan god. Okay? So it was a pagan god in which the vessels were brought to. In the year 586 B.C., First Chronicles chapter 36, verse 15 and 20 is the context that we read earlier, which is our opening scripture, verses 15 to 20. However, in verse 21, three scores, okay, when, remember when I read that phrase? It refers to the 2,200 day year prophecy of Daniel 8.14. It was written way back then, ladies and gentlemen, prior to it occurring. Okay? And it was dictated in the year 586 B.C. 1 Chronicles chapter 36, verses 15 to 21. I added the 21. But in verses 15 to 20 is the context of this study so that you will know and understand a little history in regards to what happened in the past. There is more. Bear with me this evening. In Daniel 8.14, it discusses the 2,300 day years prophet, uh, excuse me, prophecy, which was cleansed, prophetic principle that is used here. Now, turn with me to Daniel 8.14, once again. Daniel 8.14. And read in your hearing. And he said unto me, Unto 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed in heaven. Heaven means up. Therefore, this is the cleansed prophetic principle, which is a day for a year principle. In Daniel 9, verse 19, turn with me to Daniel chapter 9, verse 19. I'm going to give a few scriptures this evening. Daniel 9, verse 19, in reading and in your hearing, O Yahweh, now this is Daniel now, this is Daniel, he is remembering the 2,300 day year prophecy in regards to what would happen in the future. Now, what Daniel is recalling here is the sins of all these people and what they have been doing because they have been going into captivity, things get better, they're growing, and they go into captivity again. But Daniel says a key point in Daniel chapter 9, verse 19. Correct. Daniel chapter 9, verse 19. In reading, and this is the prayer that Daniel gave. And I think I want to use 18 as well. Let me begin, begin with verse 18. Daniel chapter 9, verse 18. O my Elohim, incline thy ear... And here, open thy eyes, and behold our desolations, and the city which is called by thy name. For we do not present our supplications before thee for our righteousness, but for thy great mercies. He knew that there was no righteousness in himself nor in his people. The Hebrews. I'm not talking about a Jew. That's a tribe. I'm talking about the Hebrews. All twelve tribes. For we do not present our supplications before thee for our righteousness, but for thy great mercies. Now here's the key in verse 19. O Yahweh, hear O Yahweh, forgive O Yahweh, hearken and do, defer not for thy own sake. O my Elohim, for the city of thy people are called by thy name. Now you may read in the 1911 great controversy 606 and then you can compare it with the 1884 and you will see the difference but stay with me I don't want to use any other writings but the Bible here I wanted to bring that thought out for your homework but let me read this once again the word defer do you know what that word means 
Let me share with us what that means. Because in Daniel 9 verse 19, Daniel the prophet is confessing his sins of Israel and he's confessing the sins of Israel of the tribes because of what has occurred in the past and in his present time. Now, turn with me to Daniel chapter 9 verse 24 in reading and in your hearing. Daniel chapter 9 and verse 24. Now these are the 70 weeks. 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon the holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. Now, in verse 24, the word defer that I mentioned in verse 19 is delay not, don't. Postpone not the 2,200 day year prophecy. Fulfill your promise, Yahweh. This is what Daniel is praying about. The 70 weeks equals times 7 equals 490 years applied to the city and Daniel. So it applies to the city and Daniel. When do the 70 weeks begin is the question we want to ask ourselves. Everybody wants to ask, when does the 70 weeks begin? Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people, Daniel. Okay, so let's go to verse 25. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment, in other words, in other versions it say decree, to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks and threescore and two weeks. The street shall be built again, and the wall even in troublous times. Now the word street here in the King James Version is incorrect. In the correct Hebrew, it refers to a square. A square. That's what it refers to. Now there was another writer years ago that I've read, and I, I got the material, I have the books. Now I understand what he was writing. Because you see, the kingdom, the New Jerusalem, is all mathematical. Heaven, it's all mathematical. Salvation, it's all mathematical. The Gospels, it's all mathematical. But I haven't brought that out. And I will attempt to show a few in this series so that we can comprehend what this is all about. You see, our Savior is soon to come and to appear. And before He comes, there's going to be seven last plagues. And we as a people must understand that he's given us 6,000 years for sin to run its course. And just for your notes, in Genesis chapter 5, it refers to a 1,000-year period. In Genesis chapter 11, it refers to a 2,000-year period. In Matthew chapter 1, verse 18, it refers to a 3,000-year period. In Revelation chapter 20, verse 1 and 2, is a 1,000-year period. In verses 1, 2, and 3, and 4, is a 7,000 year period. It's a sabbatical rest. Ladies and gentlemen, in this study I will share with you, and I will be using from the time of 31 AD to 20, 21 AD, and then cutting it down, beginning from 31 AD to 1844. How many years is that? Then, from 1844, to 2021, how many years is that? Using those two numbers in totally enough, I will share with us this evening just from that, just from doodling in regards to maybe, maybe we'll show the answer how much time we have left. No one's time setting, so don't go running off saying I'm time setting or someone is taken out of proportion. We're doing some doodling here, we're doing some math. So this evening I want to begin this study in bringing out a few key points that we need to know. In the other study I shared that there were 666 seats in the United Nations building in New York City. There are 665 seats that sit various representatives around the world. But there is one seat, 666, that is empty. It's always been empty. And it's waiting for somebody to come in and sit. Okay? Now, there are many key points that have been told to us, but at the same time, ladies and gentlemen, does anybody ever 
or has anybody ever doomed to understand what that means? Let me continue. So therefore, in verse 19, the word defer refers to delayed not that that has been prophesied, postponed not the 2,300 day year that you have given to us. In other words, fulfill your promises, Yahweh. In other words, from 457 to the year 34 AD was 490 years that was applied to the Hebrew people. Now in verse 25 says a commandment or decree unto the Messiah, the Prince. That would be the baptism in 27 AD. Israel lost her rights. Israel destroyed. They needed to restore according to its laws that were given by Artaxerxes. Israel needed to rule themselves again in righteousness in order to be a prosperous people. And because of iniquity and transgression, they were taken into captivity. That's why power was given to Nebuchadnezzar in 677 and following to take Israel into captivity. Israel needed to build the city first. In this diagram, I will share a few key points now, and I'd like us to take note. Remember, this is just a rough draft. Seventy weeks for, refers to 490 years are determined upon thy people, are the Hebrews. This is the fourth empire, which is paganism, Rome. If many of you did not know this, when Christ entered into the world as a human being, through his mother, who was Mary and Joseph, he came into a system that was already ruling, which was the fourth paganism Rome, the fourth empire. Therefore, turn with me to Ezra chapter 7. Ezra chapter 7. What chapter? Ezra chapter 7. And I, uh, be patient with me. Ezra chapter 7. Ezra chapter 7 verse 1. Now after these things in the reign of Artaxerxes, king of Persia, Ezra the son of Syria, the son of Ezra, the son of Helicon. Verse 6, this Ezra went up from Babylon, and he was a ready scribe in the Torah of Moses, which the Yahweh Elohim of Israel had given. And the king granted him all his requests according to the hand of the Yahweh, his Elohim, his God upon him, excuse me. Verse 7, And there went up some of the children of Israel, and of the priests, and of the Levites, and the singers, and the porters, and the Nithians, unto Jerusalem in the seventh year of Artaxerxes the king. Verse 11, Now this is the copy of the letter that the king Artaxerxes gave unto Ezra the priest, the scribe, even a scribe of the words of the commandments of the Yahweh and of his statutes to Israel. Verse 12, Artaxerxes, king of kings, unto Ezra the priest, a scribe of the Torah of the Elohim of heaven, perfect peace, and at such a time. Verse 13, I make a decree that all they of the people of Israel and of his priests and Levites in my realm which are minded of their own free will to go up to Jerusalem, go with thee. Verse 14, for as, for as much as thou art sent of the king and of his seven counselors to inquire concerning Judah and Jerusalem, according to the Torah of thy Elohim, which is in thy hand, and to carry the silver and gold which the king and his counselors have freely offered unto the Elohim of Israel whose habitation is in Jerusalem. Can I hear an amen? 
This is the beginning in regards to Ezra in the year of 457 BC. There was three decrees, but Artaxerxes' decree was in fulfilled correctness. In our next study, ladies and gentlemen, I will elaborate more in the year of 457. At this moment, what I'd like to share is that there are seven weeks and 62 weeks. So many of us want to think that the 70 weeks, 490 years, is one long prophecy. Well, it's not. It is actually two parts. Because you got seven weeks, which are 49 years, and then you got your 62 weeks, which is actually 483 plus 1 would be uh, 484. Then you have your seven years. Then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. You got eight, 18, 10 years, 1,810 years. Let me elaborate. Once again, the seven weeks represents from 457 BC, 490 years, was to restore and rebuild Jerusalem, 408. From 408 to 27 AD is 434 years. 62 weeks. So in this phase, ladies and gentlemen, they had to restore and build the temple. They had to clean up that city. But Artaxerxes is the one that gave them the decree and also gave them other laws for them to enact in building that temple. So from 408 was to restore the building of the temple and then 62 weeks are determined upon thy people, Daniel, which is 434 years, to the Messiah of the Prince in 27 AD. Now, here, ladies and gentlemen, you see the picture more fully. So in the year of 457 BC was the decree by Artaxerxes to build Jerusalem. We come to 408, 49 years later, B.C., Jerusalem rebuilt. Turn with me to Daniel chapter 9, verse 25. Daniel chapter 9, verse 25. In reading and in your hearing, know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment, which is 457 B.C., to restore and to build Jerusalem, 408, Unto the Messiah, the Prince, 27 A.D., shall be seven weeks, and threescore and two weeks, which are the 62 weeks, 434 years. The street shall be built again, and that word street is the square shall be built again, and the wall even in troublous times. This is what occurred here, and this is the prophecy that was fulfilled. Now we come down to 27 A.D. where Christ is baptized. Now, this is the Messiah. Does anybody know what Messiah means? Does anybody know what Messiah means? The Messiah means anointed one. This is who they were to look for, was the anointed one. Because there were many false Christs then and even today in 2021. The Messiah refers to the anointed one. The name Christ means Hamashiach. And as you look at the screen, he was baptized in 27 AD. He was baptized in the fall. So to understand your correlation, your math, you need to go back a few years so that you understand why he was baptized in the fall. However, the seven years is referring to one week. So from 27 AD to 34 AD, you have a beautiful key point from 27 A.D. to 31 A.D. is two and a half years that he healed and ministered to the people. The majority of the time was in healing and caring for the people. He was doing his missionary work. However, in 31 A.D., Yeshua HaMashiach is crucified. Not for himself. He was cut off for us in the midst of the week. So this one week here, ladies and gentlemen, is referring to seven years. Seven years, ladies and gentlemen, refers to a 2520 of literal days. We also have to understand as well is that the Moabims played a vital role in last day events throughout these 
490 years. Did you know that? The Moedims, set times, sacred seasons. Now, in our next study, we will share more, elaborate why they're re removed in Daniel 7, verse 25, when it shows times and laws. The correct reading in time refers to sacred seasons, appointed times. It's an incorrect reading that you're reading in your King James Version. Therefore, in 31 AD, Yahushua HaMashiach was crucified. The Hebrews rejected him and accepted Barabbas. That's your 25, 20, or little days, from 27 AD to 34 AD. However, after the crucifixion, the Gospels were still going to the Hebrews. They were still being evangelized. And out of love and mercy, Yeshua gave them three and a half years to accept his son as the Savior, as their intercessor. In 34 AD, however, outside of the temple or outside of the kingdom, they began the stoning of Stephen. That seized probation for the Hebrews. And then remember, I'm saying Hebrews, all 12 tribes. So from 457 BC, the decree went out to rebuild and restore Jerusalem. It ended in 34 AD when they rejected Yeshua HaMashiach. In 31 AD, he gave them love and mercy. However, in 34 AD, when they stoned Stephen to death, the first Christian Hebrew martyr, after the crucifixion, probation closed for the Hebrews. The Hebrews have to comprehend this because what's being done here with many other evangelicals and Sunday keepers and theologians is that they want to reapply this information for the future and say that we got a seven year tribulation, seven years of want, seven years of famine, etc. There's all kinds of confusion. Well, somebody brought all this confusion inside. What you're looking at here is a premise for each one of the Gospels that has been given to us. Each one of the prophecies that Jeremiah, Isaiah, Daniel, Ezra has given to us. Then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. So in the midst of 34 AD to 1844, you have a 260 day year prophecy that also took place there that will also be discussed partially in this study and will continue in the other studies. Now, from 457 BC to 1844 AD, judgment hit. All this that you have before you, ladies and gentlemen, from 457 BC to 1844 AD, all this is history, all this has been judged. It's over with. This is for your foundation and your premise to understand the Gospels and the prophecies and what is coming and preparing for the last days to give this loud cry. In Ezra chapter 6, may I ask someone to turn with me to, or a few of you to turn with me to Ezra chapter 6? Excuse me. Ezra chapter 6. Turn with me to Ezra chapter 6. And we are going to do a little reading. Uh, Ezra chapter 6, and let's read verses 1. Ezra chapter 6. Then Darius the king made a decree, and search was made in the house of the rows, where the treasures were laid up in Babylon. Turn with me to verse 6. Ezra chapter 6, beginning with verse 6 through 12. In reading your hearing, now therefore, Tenai, governor beyond the river, Shethrobosnai, I hope I am correct, uh, reading that correctly, I apologize if I'm not, and your companions, the Aphrodites, which are beyond the river, be ye far from thence. Let the work of this house of God alone let the governor of the Jews and the elders of the Jews build this house of God in his place. Moreover, I make a decree, what ye shall do to the elders of these Jews for the building of this house of Elohim, that of the king's goods, even the tribute beyond the river, forthwith 
expenses be given unto these men that they be not hindered and that which they have need of both young bullocks and rams and lambs or the burnt offerings of the God of heaven wheat, salt, wine, and oil according to the appointment of the priests which are at Jerusalem let it be given them day by day without fail verse 10 that they may offer sacrifices of sweet saviors unto the Elohim of heaven and pray for the life of the king and of his sons. Verse 11, Also I have made a decree that whosoever shall alter this word, let timber be pulled down from his house, and being set up, let him be hung upon, and let his house be made a dunghill for this. Verse 12, And the Elohim that hath caused his name to dwell there to destroy all kings and people, that shall put to their hand to alter and to destroy this house of Elohim, which is at Jerusalem. I, Darius, have made a decree, let it be done with speed. Turn with me to Daniel chapter 9, verse 24. Daniel chapter 9, verse 24. Daniel chapter 9, verse 24, and read in your hearing. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy, Yeshua HaMashiach. This is the seventy weeks. Determined upon thy people from the year of 457 B.C. Ending in 1844. Turn with me to Daniel chapter 7 verse 10. Daniel chapter 7 verse 10. In reading your hearing. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousand thousands ministered unto him. And ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set and the books were opened. Judgment hidden in 1844. Rather you want to call in September or in October, judgment hit 1844. What I am sharing with us now, ladies and gentlemen, is that in the year of, inside the 2300 year prophecy, from AD 538 to AD 1798 was 260 years that the Catholic Conclave of Cardinals, Papal Rome, the Fifth Empire, mutilated and killed more than 250 million people plus and are still continuing to genocide the world with their rulings and their laws. These were the dark ages of the Middle Ages. This was the fifth empire, Papal Rome. This is biblical, this is correct. However, from the year of 1798, 49 years were given to them until 1844, which was the spiritual temple to be rebuilt, referring to the people the holy people who kept his commandments and his moedims, they had 49 years to build their spiritual temple, their minds, all over again because Rome bombarded them with false theology of apostasy, of Laudato Si, that encircled the world which is now being forced upon us through climate action change now, H.R. 9. This is where Laudato Si comes from. It didn't just recently rise up with Pope Francis I, no, no, no. He used the writings of his predecessors going all the way back to 538 and escalating down to 2021. This is what happened. Judgment has hit and judgment of the living is coming to your house. Get ready. 2,300 day year prophecy. Ezra chapter 6 verse 1 verses 6 through 12. Daniel 9.24 Judgment, Daniel 7, 10, 1844. Beginning in 457, ended in 1844. This is history. It's done. However, the remembrance of the little horn ruled for 260 years. But 49 years were given to us from 1798 to 1844 to build the spiritual temple in his people. Here, brothers and sisters, 
we can see that the issue has come. From A.D. 538 to A.D. 1798, in these Dark Ages or Middle Ages, they ruled for 1260 years. These were the Dark Ages. People were being burned. People were being butchered. People were going through the guillotines. The heads, the arms, the neck were being cut off. This is the history of the Fifth Empire, Papal Rome. The little foxes that spoil the vines, Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 15. Turn with me to Song of Solomon. Song of Solomon has eight chapters. We will be reading chapter 2, verse 15. In reading your hearing, Take us the foxes, the little foxes, the spoil the vines, for our vines have tender grapes. These foxes are Jesuits. The grapes, the tender grapes, are referring to God's people. In verse 14, it says, O my dove, referring to Yeshua, O my Yahushua, that art in the cliffs of the rock, in the secret places of the stars, let me see thy conscience, let me hear thy voice, for sweet is thy voice, and thy conscience is comely. This is a prophecy. All eight chapters of Song of Solomon are prophecies, brothers and sisters. It is not about melody. It's not about poetry. Our Jesuits. The little foxes that spoil the vines are Jesuits that are present now, that were present then. Francisco de Ribera was born in 1537, died in 1591. Now that I will share this with you, ladies and gentlemen, there is nothing in the Bible that we cannot find to prove our premise. All this is coming from the Bible. It's not coming from somebody else's notes. And I want us to feel very comfortable in understanding and calling righteousness right and unrighteousness wrong. Ladies and gentlemen, these little foxes that spoil the vines have infiltrated the government of the United States and every government in the world, including China, including Russia. And our Savior is looking at you. Are you ready to give this message? Our Savior has already built a temple, not by hands and by blood. This is why our Savior ascended on his crucifixion in 31 AD to establish a home for his people who would, with prerequisites, be baptized, repent, be born again, and to have a home in the kingdom, and to see the whole earth being recreated, that we as a people might build our home where there is freedom, we may play with the animals, where we as a people may have freedom. In the new earth and new heaven, there will be freedom. There will be liberty. There will be people who will be able to speak and communicate and gather together and eat. No one will be drunk anymore. No one will be smoking. No one will be using drugs anymore. Everything will be done all over again as he wanted it from the very beginning. In closing, my brothers and sisters, I want to share with you the culprits that were involved in changing the prophecies, writing books that has not culminated, but has brought this whole world into confusion, where everyone is at everybody's faces and everybody is separate and distant from each other because everybody believes different views because of different scholars have gone to different schools and read fictitious false prophecies in the Christian churches in the United States and in the world. It is because of them, them that Satan used in order to bring about such a chaos that no one would be able to see the correct message unless they were reborn again and willing to have a heart to search the scriptures to learn and understand that Yeshua died for us. For you, my brothers and sisters. Yes, and for you. And you, let us read. The little foxes that spoil the vines are Jesuits. 
that infiltrated the government of the United States. President Joe Biden is a Jesuit being led by Francis I to bring in La Dato Si. Number one, Francisco Rivera, born in 1537, died in 1591, wrote a commentary on Revelation in 18, excuse me, in 1585. It advocated futurism. He is the founder and the leader of futurism. The Seventh-day Adventist Church, South Supporting Ministries, Independent Ministries do not believe in futurism. However, there has been a Jesuit technique that has been used in changing literal time to symbolic time. That is a Jesuit technique. Bear in mind with what I just said, and I will repeat it. Number two, Manuel de la Cunza, born in 1731, died in 1801. A Jesuit from Chile who wrote a treatise with a Jewish pen name in an effort to gain wider acceptance among Protestants in the United States and around the world. That also reflected futurism. He himself, the second criminal to change scripture. Their futurism with Francisco and Manuel is fictitious. It is not true, it is false. Number three, Edward Irving. Born in 1792, died in 1834, spent about six trips coming to the United States, the New World. Edward Irving is the one that got the manuscripts from Manuel de la Cunza, studied them out, and accepted futurism, accepted the state of the dead, which is that everybody goes to heaven and it's fine and living in a better place. Edward Irving is also the individual that received the writings from others in regards to a secret, secret rapture. This secret rapture comes from the Jesuit priest order. These are their doctrines of theology, which is false. Scottish clergyman, Pentecostal, translated and added discourse to Lacunza's work. Stay with me. Margaret MacDonald, the fourth individual, through visions in early 1830s, at approximately the time of William Miller, at approximate age 15 years old, had the idea of a secret rapture, yes, Margaret MacDonald, of believers prior to appearance of Antichrist. The idea was promoted by her pastor, who is it now? Edward Irving. Edward Irving. This is for John Hagee, all these Sunday-keeping pastors that you're going to see in a couple of days that come on on Sunday morning are all preaching to you secret rapture. Yes. They're getting all their theology, ladies and gentlemen, from these foxes that spoil the vines. This is false theology. It is fictitious. Yeshua never gave this information to them. Never. Continuing. Samuel R. Mitland, born in 1792, died in 1866, used his influence as librarian to Archbishop of Canterbury to promote futurism blended with dispensationalism. It's one of the same, just a different name. Just to put a little taste, they added the word dispensationalism. John Nelson Darby. Born in 1800, died in 1882. Visited Margaret MacDonald and Edward Irving. Why did he visit them? Because he wanted a closer relationship in the false, fictitious theology that Edward Irving had received from Manuel de la Cunza's writings. Accepted both futurism and secret rapture concepts. This is where it's all coming from. Systemized, dispensational, dispensational, excuse me, thought and brought it to America with some success. Therefore, as I close, my brothers and sisters, you will never find a secret rapture in the Bible. And what they did is they, they converted the words and they changed them so that it would blend in with the secret rapture. In the name of our Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, Everyone is going to see Christ come back. 
everyone. There is not going to be no left behind. That all the righteous are going to go. And the dead are going to stay here. And they're going to go through the tribulation, etc., etc. That's not true. That's not biblical. My Bible, Texas Receptus, doesn't say that. I'll give you a thousand dollars if you can prove to me that it says that. You won't find it. These teachings from Manuel de la Gunza and Francisco de Ribera, Ribera and Irving, they made it up. And they twisted the scriptures to fit their agenda so that the picture of the mark of the beast wouldn't be pointed towards the Pope, the Antichrist. So we can point to somebody else. And today in 2021, you have many people that passed away, theologians, pointing the picture to Islam, etc., the Antichrist, pointing the picture over here, and pointing the picture over here. Ladies and gentlemen, is it no wonder what, what is happening here? Have you ever asked yourself what is going on? No denomination is going to give you salvation. The only church in the world, the only church in the world, and not all... And although it has its changes in the books, is the Seventh-day Adventist Church is given the correct message. And now South Supporting Ministries Independent Ministries, as well as the 34 Angels Ministries. There are some key points that the Seventh-day Adventist Church doesn't accept, like number one, the Moedines. It's there. And they only remove the Moedines so they can be part of the ecumenical movement. Nobody believes in the Trinity is going to be part of the 144,000. Nobody is going to be part of the 144,000 is going to believe in the secret rapture. They're not going to teach that. This is of the devil himself. Book closed. Judgment has come. Cyrus Ingerson, Schofield. How many remember the Schofield Bible? That Schofield Bible is corrupt to the core. It sold many, many, many millions of books. But it's information that's in there, ladies and gentlemen. It's not correct. Born in 1843, died in 1921. Greatly influenced by writings of Darby. Incorporated futurist notes into the this, or his Schofield Reference Bible, first published in 1909. And I want to make a key point. It is a unique Bible. But as you look at the Bible and you open it up, it has its all key notes and references down at the little bottom of the pages of your Bible. Giving references and explanations why things have been removed and changed from the King James Texas Receptus Bible. Did we know that the Texas Receptus Bible was correct. And had it not been when they found the Dead Sea Scrolls out in the Middle East, and that little Bedouin boy threw that rock, this is how he ended up finding these scrolls. And when they found these scrolls that were ancient, they analyzed them and researched them. Many, many scholars, even the Catholic scholars. And lo and behold, these scrolls were the exact replica of the Texas Receptus King James Version. Ladies and gentlemen, is it no wonder we've been led righteously? Is it no wonder that others have come in and changed the writings of your Bibles? It is time now to get a correct Bible so that we may all be in a correct premise. That we may grow in his character so that he will find no spot, no wrinkle upon us. On you. For our Savior loves you. I'm going to read it once again if you don't mind. Cyrus Ingerson Schofield, born in 1843, died in 1921, greatly influenced by writings of Darby, incorporated futurist notes into his Schofield Reference Bible, first published in 1909. Through this Bible, futurism gained acceptance into many Christian homes and many Protestant Bible schools. There's the problem. Today, major Protestant organizations endorse futurism and dispensationalism one the same. 
Section 1, from the year of A.D. 31 to A.D. 1844, has been 1,813 years and 7 months that our Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, has spent inside the holy place. From his crucifixion from 31 A.D., he's been interceding 1,813 years, 0. 0.7 months in the holy place. However, in A.D. 1844, our Savior has been praying for you and for me for many, many years. And today, ladies and gentlemen, in 1844, he transferred into the most holy of holies, interceding on our behalf. In section 1, A.D. 1844 to A.D. 2021, October 22nd, or September 22nd, because we haven't come to October, will be 170, 177 years that he has been interceding on our behalf. Today, he has been in the Most Holy of Holies for 176 years. 176 years. So our Savior is now in the Most Holy of Holies interceding on our behalf. The Holy of Place is closed because he transitioned from one ministry into another compartment to finish his ministry. 177 years, October 22nd. Most Holy of Holies. Let's take 2,000 years. A, I presented to us that our Savior spent 1,813 years, 7 months in the holy place. B, I presented that he has spent 177 years in the most holy of holies in 2021, October 22nd. But we have not reached October yet, so it would be 176 you can use 176 or 177 in following. Gives us, and we're going to add now and do some math. If we take 1813.7 and add 177 brings us to 1,990 years .7. If we subtract 2,000 years from it, bear with me, if we get the number on your left-hand side, which is my right, if we get AD 31 from his crucifixion and bring it to 2021 to our day today, this is what we will come up with. So we added 1813.7 plus 177, that he's been in the holy place, the most holy of holies, we come up with 1,990 years, 0.7 months. And if we subtract 2,000 years, what was the answer? It would be 9.3 years that we have left. However, if we add up 31 AD to 2021, it gives us 1,990 years. Isn't it a coincidence? It's one, almost one and the same. Here, I'm surprised. We, didn't, we came short. We came nine years, point three months short of 2,000 year period because after his crucifixion, it would be 2,000 years that he would return. If we get 31 AD to 2021, we come short. We're, 100, we're 1,990 years from a 2,000 year period. Continuing. Now I want to share a few key points. And I want to read this to us, brothers and sisters, because uh, I, I got some mail today, and it's when I received it. But I want to read this to us because this it correlates with much that I have been giving in the last few years. But this ministry, <coughs> I won't say the name of the ministry. Uh, I've only spoken with him about two times. Uh, it's the Seventh-day Remnant Herald, and I'll read as follows. <clears throat> In his letter, he says, 
I want to apologize right off to my subscribers for not being as frequent in making blog entries and videos lately. To put it lightly, I have been very busy lately, and not just on tech issues. The Lord has moved me to look into something that has me very excited as it confirms that not only is the latter rain about to fall, our King Jesus is to come a lot sooner than most ever realized. In fact, many of the remnant church members have been blessed recently with a new and even stronger sense of urgency than we have had the last 10 years alone. The latter rain is very soon, and of course, Christ comes shortly thereafter. All the puzzle pieces are finally being gathered, and the full picture has become quite clear to God's obedient remnant people. Here's what he shares. And it brought tears to my eyes. Uh, I wiped them off, but it, it filled my heart to realize that we're starting to see what our Savior wants us to see, not what Richard wants to see. In reading your hearing, that all being said, I am currently working on a sermon regarding why we have seen all that's happened the last few years, as well as what's being planned by our corrupt leaders for the coming years. I will be sharing the sermon in the coming weeks or months. I am not sure as to when the Lord will allow it to be shared as I await more light on the subject as we speak. But suffice it to say, I will share some of the points with you now that have been revealed thus far that paint a picture that clearly says we have much closer to our Lord's return than anyone alive has ever assumed. What's happening now never happened before. Number three, here is what I have outlined for the sermon so far. And no, I am not nor will I ever set a date for our Lord's return. All I plan to do in this coming sermon is to share what prophecy says will happen and what current events have already confirmed have happened as well as what the corrupt leaders are planning to have happen. Here's what I wanted to share. Biblically history shows there was 2,000 years from Adam to Abraham. That was one of several studies that I put out. That you can see that, 6,000 years. Mm -hmm. But he says here in his letter, he says, Biblical history shows that there was 2,000 years from Adam to Abraham, 2,000 years from Abraham to Christ, and then 2,000 years from Christ to our day. As Bible students, we know that Christ predicted in the Second Samaritan prophetic parable found in Luke chapter 10, verse 30, 35, that he will come back to take us home in 2,000 years. In other words, after 31 A.D., is crucifixion. As we also know, the plagues will soon come to destroy all life on earth, and plagues number seven is actually 125 chunks of hell. The prophet Hosea also said God's people will be raised up at the start of the prophesied 1,000 years of Satan's wandering among the dead he tempted in our generation, which is not only 2,000 years from the ascension of Christ, 31 A.D., we see that Hoshea also calls the day God's people are to ascend to heaven, the third day, for God the Father. And so that too matches up with the 2,000 years timeline and the prophetic parable of Christ. I didn't read it all, brothers and sisters. What got my attention was the 6,000 year period. So we know, as I shared earlier, that there's a 1,000 year period in Genesis chapter 5, 2,000 year periods in Genesis chapter 11, and there is a third, fourth, and fifth thousand year period in Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. Three generations. So that's 5,000 years. And in Revelation chapter 20 is a 6,000 year period and a 7,000 year period of sabbatical rest. We've come to the time, ladies and gentlemen, that we ourselves must understand the 2,300 year prophecy and understand that we cannot reapply and use it as a future premise for issues to take place. The sacrifices are over with. Animal sacrifices, the oblations, it's all over with. It ended. No more animal sacrifices. But Israel is attempting to rehearse and bring this all up again. And that Satan's going to go there, he's going to do this and do that. 
Ladies and gentlemen, is that biblical? Does the Bible say that? And that he's to walk through the wall that has been blocked? Our Savior is to ascend from the kingdom with the new Jerusalem. He's not going to touch the earth. Let us close in prayer. Let us pray. <clears throat> Our Father who art in heaven, holy, 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 Yeshua, thank you for your love and your grace you've given to us. We ask for your protection that you may put a halo and a covering upon all your people all over the world who keep and search thee with all their heart, soul, and mind and keep thy commandments and more deeds. This is our prayer in the name of Yeshua. We praise you for hearing and answering our prayers and we thank you for the testimonies that have been given by others and what I read this evening. In the name of Yeshua we pray.